Oh my gosh. Many of you are most likely at the point where you're choosing or you've had to choose between work and family. And it's always a hard, hard choice every single time you have to make that. Some of you are way past that and have lost touch and connections and relationships with your family and your friends because you've chosen work over life. Most of you don't even believe it's possible to have that balance between work and life and finding out what matters to you. Our guest today is a strategic advisor. She's an attorney. She's a three-time best-selling author. She is a top certified ski instructor and trainer. She's a certified dive master and a high performance athlete that has actually appeared on podium finishing with stand up paddleboard and surfing. She just got back from Hawaii catching the waves. She has mastered the art of taking action and finding the, the balance between work and life. And she's got some keys to help you figure that out. You'll figure out why she's here, why she's brilliant, why she is going to be part of the Erin Strayer Show today, where we are all about promoting, cultivating, and expanding amazing female entrepreneurs that are out there in the world doing things just a little bit differently. She will rock your world today, friends, because we're gonna talk about some of those hot topics like how do you choose? How do you choose between work and getting paid and money and then family and making your heart happy. How do you choose? Well, she's gonna give you some workarounds to that. Today, I am Erin Strayer, I'm your host in Recovering Corporates and Entrepreneurs Hire Me to get them business beyond the basics because most of them are indecisive. They're held hostage by their own fear and quite honestly, they have become complacent and have settled for average. So I help them keep on task by setting obtainable goals, plugging gaping holes in their business this today is one of them that we're gonna talk about. Oh my gosh, right? That work-life balance and finding that. And I help them take their dreams to reality. And bottom line, I provide executive level accountability so that you and your business gets the attention to detail it deserves and you start making money in your business. So Francine Tone is our expert panelist. We're not even on a panel, it's all about you. <laughs> Hi, friend. Thanks, Aaron. It's so great to be here. I'm so excited to be chatting with everybody who's watching. You know, it is so cool. And um, like you have had an amazing, amazing career, an amazing career that's at over 30 some years, right? As an attorney yep. in the state of California, like you've sat on judge panels, you've done mm -hmm. all these amazing, like, whoa, sit back things. But somewhere along the line, life changed for you. It, it did, you know, and, and I get it because I was that person, right? That, that you know, the office bitch, right? Yeah. <laughs> and the person is just like, work, 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 and got to get the work done, got to make the money, and just focused on all the business parts of life. And then you start seeing things that were important to you just kind of slip away, and you go, what happened? And, you know, you get snappy with your kids and you're going, I wanted to be a good mom. I didn't want to be snappy with my kids or your husband's doing everything they can to be nice to you. And you're just like snapping at them. And it's not what you want, Who's but you're just kind of like, oh my God, you know, and, and, and I, I get that. And, and um, <laughs> it's, it's interesting because I was that person um, in a law office and this is even before I became a lawyer, I was already that person. And I, I made a lawyer cry because I, yeah, I was in charge of making sure that all the work got done. I was the office administrator, the top paralegal, and I would farm work out. And this lawyer wanted to take an early Friday off with his girlfriend. And I, I said, no. And I don't exactly remember how I said it because I think I want to push that out of my memory because it was <laughs> such a negative experience. But I actually made this guy cry because I said, no, you, you can't leave early until this is on my desk and whatever it was that I did. And that was a little bit of a wake up call for me because, you know, why would I treat somebody that way? Mm -hmm. And how horrible that I'm going to make him suffer. And yeah, I was suffering, but, you know, make him suffer too. What a horrible thing to live with. And, and not only from his point of view, but my point of view is like, that's not the kind of person I wanted to ever be. Yeah. And I became that person by accident. It wasn't because I didn't meant to be that way. And then the final wake up call, I think, was when I got that call from preschool, you know, and like they're closing and I'm going, um, your son's still here or someone picking him up. 
I forgot my son. Can you imagine? I this was a time when life was really getting really shaky, right? I'm getting a divorce. My son was the most important person in the world to me, and I forgot him. I mean, I at that point I felt like a complete failure. Failure as a mother, failure as a professional, failure as a human being. I felt like a total loser. It didn't matter what was what I had accomplished or anything at that point. I just felt like a loser. And that got me to change what I was doing. But I tell you, it wasn't until much, much, much later, because you think you're getting balance in life. And I know a lot of women who like, well, I spend time with my kids. I spend time with my husband. I do a little of this. But when you step back and look at it, you realize it's not quality time with anybody. Yeah. You're If you're doing all those things, how many of you watching sometimes sit there and just go, I'm getting burned out, trying to do it all. I'm getting stressed out trying to do it all, right? I mean, I've been there, I, I know. And, and you just go through it day after day after day until some major thing happens, like you get cancer or somebody close to you dies. Or like in my case, I got a phone call. I mean, I already had cancer and got through that. And that wasn't even enough to change everything. But it was that call, that little boy that I forgot when he was three, when he was 24, I got that call that he'd been in an accident and they couldn't tell me if he was dead or alive. That was when life changed. And I don't want people to go through, I'm sorry, I'm like, I could start crying. I, know. I, don't I, got, want. I got goosies all over me because no. I don't think any of us think it's going to happen to us. Exactly. You don't, you know, but do you have to go through that for you to get control of your life, to get a life that is balanced and that is you wake up every morning going, oh, boy, I can't wait to what's going to, you know, for what's going to happen today instead of, oh, my God, uh, I don't even want to look at my to do list today. Right. You know, and do you have to have a major crisis for that for you to make that change? And I'm here to tell you, no, you don't <laughs> it's like, like, no, that's not wait for a crisis to get your life on track you know and that's what we talked about when you and i talked before it was you know i'm like oh yeah some people need that crisis to whack them in the head and get them on track and like really start to go crap i have missed the mark here i have really really missed the mark and but i love the way that you think it's like no you don't have to wait because there is a way to maximize and 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 to live and exist in balance between the work and the life and um you don't need to wait for that phone call right. so so you're saying it, it it does exist it does exist because you know i got the phone call right which was the wake up but sometimes what happens is like i said i had cancer sometimes that should be a wake up call for you you get cancer like what do you do and I got cancer, I beat cancer, did my life completely change? No. So even having a crisis isn't necessarily going to get that change to happen. So why wait for one? Mm -hmm. If Because you might have this major crisis and your life may still not change enough to be able to go, okay, I'm still you know, living the same kind of life I had before, or have you completely changed it? where you can go up and do like, I spent three months out of the year surfing in Hawaii yeah. and I run two businesses. So, you know, can you still do that? And do you need a crisis? And is, will the crisis be the thing to make the change? Not necessarily. So don't wait for one. So, and, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I'm like, I don't want that phone call. I, I, I don't want that phone call. And I know that there have been certain points in my life where like, yeah, I was right where you are. I'm like running two businesses. I'm like in the process of a divorce. Like I got a young thing, like, right? Like, and how do you move through that? Right. And yeah. How not do you have that massive, massive crisis happen? Right. Right. Yeah, that exactly. And so, down. Yeah, exactly. And so what it comes down to is a lot of people, what they do is they talk about things like time management. 
which I think is a complete myth. There's no such thing as time management. And a lot of people know that, but they still try to manage time. Yeah. <laughs> if you know that you can't, that you still try, right? And I ask women this, um, how many planners have you purchased in oh your life? Oh my gosh. How many, right? And how many have you- Right in them. Yeah, exactly. And how many have you opened? Right. And how many have you used from cover to cover? Right. And how many have changed your life? Right. Zero. Exactly. Zero. And I have my stack of planners too. You know, right? <laughs> like we all do. Because <laughs> they're so pretty. And they, they are. Are. and they have nice little tabs on and there. And they're set up so nice. I know. It's like if I could just fill out all these little parts in the planner, my life will get great, right? No. And you know why? Because you're taking all that free time that you could have and you're spending it filling out the planner. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't work, right? And then, and the other one is the to-do list. How many oh people gosh. have these massive to-do lists? And if I could just get through this to-do list, my life would be better. And and does that to-do list ever disappear? No, oh, it just never does. It just gets longer and longer and longer, right? Exactly. Yeah, because because it looks like you're productive if you got something on a list, right? And and it's funny because one of the things I used to teach is is the effective to do list, right? And I've I've moved away from that because I realized it really doesn't work. And I used to teach people like, look, if you want to, and this is something you do, like if you want to feel a little confident and feel like yeah. you've accomplished something, like when you're feeling really bummed out, and and that this kind of works, where you write down the things you need to do, like maybe three or four things you absolutely need to do, and then you write down something you already did that day and cross it off, and you go that and go, yes, a success. So I already got one. That can help get kind of kickstart some motivation and kickstart a feeling of success. But is it going to free up a bunch of time and give you time management? No, it's not. And and we spend so much time on this kind of stuff. And I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm going to tell you the key. The key is your brain. Oh. It is your brain bandwidth. This is the key to everything. And I want to say that it's it's the key to life. And I'm probably really going way out on the limb to say that, you know, and I'm not a neuroscientist. And um, when I talk about the brain, I, I really simplify the neuroscience. I've done a lot of studying because that accident I told you about by my son, it was, um, he had a severe traumatic brain injury and he was found unconscious at the bottom of a ski hill. And he was an Air Force pilot by that time with the life in front of him. It was just, had a fantastic life. And when I, he, he was in New Zealand, I'm in California and he was in New Zealand. By the time I get there, he's in a coma, he's in ICU and the doctors tell me he's gonna be a vegetable for the rest of his life. And, and I'm looking, he, he's a pilot, man. Yeah, right, I like, no, no, he's an Air Force pilot. Um, no, he just graduated from the Air Force Academy. Uh, he's really bright, he's really smart, he's got the world in front of him. He's gonna be a vegetable for the rest of his life. Like, of course not, no. And the doctors got so mad at me, actually, that because I refused to accept this prognosis, they took me in the back of the room with the CAT scans, showed me all that. I'm looking at them going, I don't see what the problem is. And they look at me and they go, white is bad. White on a CAT scan means that every brain cell that's white has been destroyed forever. And I look back at the CAT scan and it's all white. And so I'm looking at that and going, uh, Okay, it's all white, so all those brain cells are dead. And I turned to the doctors and I said, duly noted. And if my son hasn't changed in two years, I'll consider your prognosis, but now is not the time to give up. And they kept, even though they kept telling me, you need to look at this realistically, I went, I'm not giving up. You've given up, but I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna do whatever it takes so that this is not the result. Okay, long story short, it took 10 years, but at the end of 10 years, Kevin was out of the Air Force. He wasn't a pilot anymore, but he got a job as a strategic military planner for the United States Air Force Command in Europe and Africa, where he spent six and a half years in that job in Europe, traveling all over Europe, skiing all over Europe. I would get texts, I'm going to Switzerland. Guess where I'm going this weekend? I'm going to France. Um, Complete recovery baffles, baffles the doctors to this day. They cannot believe the kind of recovery he's had. But because of that prognosis and because I wasn't about to fold at the beginning of the journey, I did do a lot of studying about the brain and learned a lot and watched him 
and helped him rehabilitate. And through that, he and I together learned things that we didn't know back when he was a baby, when I went to it the first time, because he was like bringing a two-year-old back to a, an adult in a short amount of time. He had to learn to walk, talk, eat, dress himself. He had to learn everything from scratch. And But during that process, we learned a lot about the brain. And we learned a lot about how we use the brain and how we overload our brain. Mm -hmm. Just by what we do, what we let people do to us, what we hang on to. And so I look at the brain bandwidth, which is... Brain bandwidth is the brain's capacity to do everything it has to do, say, all day long. And that includes breathing, your heartbeat, all the things that it controls autom auto, you know, automatically, mm -hmm. as well as all the way down to making the difficult decisions that we have to make every single day, right? But it's not unlimited. It's kind of like the bandwidth on our internet. Like if you were, if you're watching this show and you're trying to stream a movie at the same time, one or the other or both are not gonna come through, right? Because yeah. there's, there's a limit. There's right. a limit to the bandwidth. And so what we do, what, what almost everybody does, is we overload our bandwidth. We do it to ourselves. Other people do it to us. And we just let everything in, everything in, you know, without filtering. And when we do that pretty soon, it's like streaming a, three movies while trying to watch a live show and do your Excel program at the same time. And it's your computer. Like 27 out. tabs open on your. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's that's kind of how most people operate day to day. And so it's no wonder that it's like being in rush hour traffic every single day, all day long. Mm. And no wonder you can't move and you feel stuck sometimes and you feel burned out. You feel stressed. And at any given moment in the day, your brain is multitasking because you're trying to make it multitask and you can't get anything done. We all know multitasking doesn't work, but you're getting your brain to do it in the background. Yeah. Right? So that's gotta stop. Yeah. And like the whole rush hour, like I totally like just went there with a visual when you got talking about rush hour and I'm like, oh my gosh, so many people, one, waste so much time commuting to work every single day. Yes. Right? One. Two, then you're delayed, you're held up, there's accidents on the freeway, you got irritated people next to you, you have all of these things coming in that that come into that allotted amount of, of bandwidth, right? Mm -hmm. That yep. alter and set up our day to either be productive or not productive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so how do we how do we get out of rush hour? How do we get our rush hour? Okay, so this is this is like the key to what my upcoming book, The Art of Action, and the key to this is what we call, what I call the watch that does you no good. And I had a little story about this from Kevin's brain injury. And the watch that does you no good came from a day that I showed up when Kevin was recovering through his brain injury. And he's sitting there in his wheelchair and he's going like this, futzing with this thing on his wrist. It's like, and he goes, mom, they gave me this watch that does me no good. And he's futzing with a monitor on his wrist. And it's got a band like a watch and it's got a little block on it like a watch, but no face. But to someone that's brain injured, it had to be a watch because it looks like a watch, feels like a watch, right? But it's a monitor that would cause alarms to go off in the hospital if he left the ward. Oh, it's a brain injury ward. They don't want people with brain injury running all over campus. Monitoring, right? yeah. Right. So they have to stay in the spot. And what I realized at that point was like the watch that does him no good. And he's going, yeah, because I can't tell time with it. And as we went through his rehab, we realized the watch that does you no good is a great metaphor for all the things that we let into our lives and that we do, that we think, that we do, we task ourselves to, we task other people to do, things that we hold in our brain, your to-do list, all the stuff that does you no good. So what does you no good? Things that don't move you forward in whatever project you're working on, things that don't make you happy, things that don't enhance your life, things that are just burdensome and taking up valuable bandwidth. So the watch, like in Kevin's situation, his fussing with a monitor trying to tell time was a watch that did him no good. It got him nowhere. It didn't get 
help him figure out what the time was at all. It just did him nowhere. So the watch that does you no good became kind of a metaphor in our family, but we would use it to call each other out anytime any of us was doing something that did us no good. And even to the point where it's even funny things, you know, and I use it with my husband. He, um, he makes the best sandwiches in the world. And he spends all this time meticulously laying everything out. So every bite has got every flavor in it. And he spends like a good 20 minutes making this perfect sandwich. And when he's done, sometimes I walk by, I go, ooh, sandwich. And I take a bite. And usually with his back turn. And then as I'm walking away, chewing on my bite, he turns and sees and he goes, hey, you took a bite out of my sandwich. <laughs> and I look to him and I go, well, that's a watch that does you no good. And he shakes his head now, picks up his sandwich, takes it to another room so I don't take another bite, right? <laughs> and, and because he knows, one, getting upset over the fact that I took a bite of his sandwich does him no good, right? He's not going to get the bite back. What's the point arguing with it? Because it's not going to stop me from taking another bite later. If he's still hungry, he can make another sandwich. It does him no good. There's no value. It doesn't bring him any joy to have this argument. And instead, he take, gets a chuckle out of it, which is good for us to have, be able to laugh and smile. And it's not necessary. Those are the questions I ask. Does it bring us joy? And is it necessary? Well, was it necessary for him to argue about the sandwich? No, there's no value in it. And there's nothing necessary. And there's no joy. So if it doesn't bring you joy and it's not necessary, why do you bother with it? And how many things in your life do you spend in the back of your mind even that you put there that's unnecessary and doesn't bring you joy, that's just churning away, sucking away your bandwidth, keeping you in rush hour traffic? How much of that do you do every single day? And even without you answering right away, I'll tell you it's a lot, a lot of stuff that we do, right? And some of it derives from baggage that we've had since we were little kids. Right. Some of that is that. And some of that that bandwidth is used worrying about what happened to us. And part of what I, you know, I talk about with the art of action is that it doesn't matter what happened to you and it doesn't matter what was done to you or around you, because I've got my history, too. And that your next step on how you're going to deal with your bandwidth and your next step in life is your choice. You actually have the ability to make the choice and you do not have to make the choice based on your history. Hang on guys. There you are. Are you back? Oh, maybe. Wait, here we go. Our bandwidth is over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, we blew the bandwidth up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Are we so back? you were talking about um, the extension of of that and and does it bring you joy and is it necessary and what are you going to do about it? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. And so so in case you missed it, um, because we may have lost a little bandwidth. <laughs> um, if you've had a history, let's say a life of something that has been done to you around you that has created this baggage. Right. And I find that I did it. And as does everybody else, you get kind of stuck in that baggage and think you can't move forward, yeah. but you can. You can choose, notwithstanding anything in your history, to choose what is your next step. And that's a bold move, right? To say, no matter what has happened in my past, I can choose the next step. What is that? And honestly, I would tell you, it takes more than just sitting in your room going and thinking about it to make this happen. Sometimes it's going to take support, you know, benefits. This is why like um, business coaching and personal coaching, this is why that stuff works is because we need help sometimes to move us from those places. Sometimes people need to go to professionals and get some kind of psychotherapy just to kind of get past that first, get that first bridge. Sure. But um, even when you get past the first bridge, what I see is people still not feeling they have the ability to make the choice of what's next, what's next. But if you understand that it's the bandwidth in your brain and not a to-do list or a plan or a time management or some other, other kind of system, is dealing with the brain first, 
that that is the key to being able to move to the next step, being able to unclutter the brain so you have the freedom, time and energy to take make that choice and move to the next step. Yeah, and you know, I think that's so important that you looped back around to the time management, the planners, the, the all the to-do lists that we make. Um, you know, men are just as guilty as women. Oh yeah. With the lists and um, the to-dos and I have to, and, and like I know here in our home, it's the honey-do, right? <laughs> right. Okay, what's on my list, babe? What, what do I gotta do for you? And I'm like, I'm not making you a list, buddy. <laughs> But I have my own, and um, and and we get so caught up in those lists that in the busy, and you know it's not only with activities at work. I think too, right? Like, do you agree with that? That there's yes. also we're always really really busy at home too. That's right. That's and right. You know, there's, there's a gaping hole that needs yeah. a crack in it. It, there is, and there are things that we do in our personal life that is a waste of your life energy and time, you know, and we have tons of it because we, you know, here's the thing is that we have almost all grown up with this myth that to be successful, we have to be busy mm. and you have to be busy, not only at work, but at home too. You got to be doing stuff all the time. Right? Don't watch all of them people where it hurts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's like you gotta be busy all the time, especially women. And women are, you know, we're always kind of in the back seat in terms of historically, we've come to the workplace late. Yeah. Right? The bulk of the women, you know, in the, you know, even though we had a bunch of women go to the factories during World War II, after World War II, it's like, go back and raise the kids because now the guys need those jobs. And so it's been constant struggle for women to say, wait a minute, I'm just as smart as you. I'm just as good as you. I can do this just as well as you. And it has nothing to do with gender. Right. And, but it's a battle that the gender women have had. Um, but the way I approach this is I don't get on the gender bandwagon. I look at each of us individually and say, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Forget about the parade. Forget about the march. What are you going to do? What are you going to do to clear your bandwidth? What are you going to do to make time for yourself to be nice to you mm -hmm. when you do all of this? Because you'll be more effective everywhere else. But that's the myth that we have to be busy, busy, busy. And if we're not busy, we're not successful. We are not doing what it takes. And so what happens is over time, we add things on our plate so that we can be very, very busy. And when things start getting moved off, we add more things on our plate. And it gets to the point where you're not even sure anymore what's important and what's not. You just know it all needs to stay on my plate because if you take something off, you're not gonna look busy and then you're not gonna be successful. Right. Right. And this is a big fallacy. This is a big lie that we're all living with. You know, and I consider myself to be very successful even when I'm surfing in Hawaii or skiing on the ski slopes, I feel very successful because I'm present. I'm doing that thing. And when I'm sitting at my desk working, I'm present doing that thing that whatever it is that I'm doing. And I feel very successful because I can clear my bandwidth enough to be present. I'm going to say, I can't say a hundred percent, because I haven't got there yet. <laughs> but I'm going to say 90% uh, of the time, I am present in doing everything I'm doing. And I get things done really well because of that. And when I'm done with item A, I go to move to item B, which sometimes is, okay, I'm, bye, I'm off surfing. you know. And why can't all women have this? You can. But it's really looking at that plate and going, okay, this is a watch that does me no good. I need to toss that. And then don't fill it up with something else. Just toss it make room, you know, and, and you got to make room for yourself, both at home and at work. Oh, so good. Right. So oh, good. you know what? I got to share with you what I did. I, I did something oh, yeah. for years and years and years. And maybe a lot of you do this every month, you pay your bills. And then what do you do with your bills? You file them. I'm talking about at home because at work, hopefully you got somebody else to do this, but at right. home, you file them, right? You put the credit cards in here. American Express goes here. The phone bill goes here. And you've got these folders. They're all labeled. Once a year, you redo the labels oh. with a year and you file everything, right? Well, a number of years ago, I quit doing that. I just quit. I'm like, why am I doing this? What is the purpose of me doing this? How many times, and I thought, how many times in the last 
30 years, 30 years have I gone back and had to pull a bill out twice. Oh yeah, if I got audited, I would need to organize all this, right? And how often does that happen? And you know, why am I spending all this time every single month filing all these bills so that they're perfectly in order as if I was running an office here where my boss might need me to access it quickly. I don't need to do this. So now what I do is I pay the bills. Well, now I keep everything online as much as I can. Well, I don't even download the bills. But when I have paper bills, I just throw them in a packet. And I've been doing this even before we had online, you know, any, where you could keep things online. And I would just throw them in this big folder. And then when I, and of course, everything is already on my computer. I don't need to go through the bills to know what I paid. Right. And at the end of the year, I would have the bills and I would put up my tax returns and everything and just stick in this big folder in a box and put it away. I never, I have years of bills unorganized. Don't need to. Yeah. So that's just one thing that I used to do at home that sucked away my time and my energy that that just gave me a lot of freedom. There it is. And and I don't think we realize how much time a task like that actually takes. Right. Like because we don't keep track of that, you're just supposed to do it. Exactly. Supposed just, to do it. Somebody said we were supposed to do it. I don't know <laughs> who that somebody is, but we all do it. Exactly. We all do it. I don't. We're supposed to keep them for seven years. I don't know who said that either. And and how many times do we have, right? Like I got, I know I got 20 years in my closet right here of perfectly organized bills, by the yes. way. Um, yeah. yeah. So are these all things that you cover? I want to talk about your book real quick where I want to go there and let the people know how to get a copy of your book. If you guys are part of, um, of the Aaron Strayer show bot. Uh, that link is in the bot. If you want to be just type live in the comments and we'll make sure that you um, get on Tess, who is our show bot. She watches our show every week. Um, but the art of action, let's let's quickly talk about that and what what that does for people. OK, so the art of action is based off of that watch that does you no good. And it, it is about, you know, the keys to optimizing work-life balance, right? And so I talk about the watch that does you no good and some of the things that come out of that that happen every single day in most people's lives, and particularly women, because I'm a woman and a lot of the women, people I work with are women. But um, like you said, you know, men have the same issues as women do. So if you're a man watching this, you know, go get the book because it'll help you too. But inside the book, I'm also going to have things like um, what I, my husband calls them stupid brain tricks. But <laughs> there are little things that you can do that actually help free up your brain bandwidth, little tiny things that you can do. And there's a whole section on that. And it's about how we take this watch that does you no good and start applying it in your life and in situations that, that happen repeatedly over and over in order to create that time and energy. To me, time plus energy is all happens in the brain. Mm -hmm. And when you can create some time and energy in the brain, that combined equals freedom. And when you can have freedom, when you start creating freedom, that's the time and energy that you use to start balancing life. It's not even balancing, it's integrating life, right? It's mm -hmm. like, I look at life as kind of more like a bag of Skittles not a box of, you know, here's work and here's my personal life and here's my friends and my family in these neat little boxes with a bow on them. That's not life. We all know that. That doesn't work. That doesn't happen. So if that's what you're picturing work-life balances, throw that out the window because it doesn't exist. But a bag of Skittles, where right, you got four colors and they kind of like jumble around, right? And this is what happens is life happens like a bag of Skittles that sometimes gets spilled around your feet and you go, oh my God, what am I going to do? You know, blue skittle, get back in your corner. Green skittle, get back in your corner. And and this is what happens to people is all of a sudden when skittles get spilled, they go, they panic because they're like, oh, now what? And that panic feeling, it sucks away at your bandwidth as well. So this book talks about how do you manage that bag of skittles because you know they're going to spill out. Right. How do you manage that? And it's by clearing the bandwidth so you have room in your brain to manage it when it gets spilled. Mm. But if your brain is completely tied up in rush hour traffic, all Skittles does is make it jam worse. So this book is about how to manage the Skittles by clearing out that bandwidth, getting you out of rush hour traffic. Yeah, 
Yeah. And let me tell you, that's when your head spins off and you <laughs> go to like a whole nother planet and uh, mm -hmm. your family's like, whoa, leave her alone today. Exactly. <laughs> that's when you make lawyers cry like I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Right. <laughs> You guys, we have been talking today with the amazing, amazing Francine Tone. She is a world-class surfer and paddleboarder. She is a high-performance athlete. She's a three-time over best-selling author. She is a, a um, strategist and a strategic advisor as well as an attorney for over 30 years. Am I right there? But I remember yep. she is a queen of figuring out not only business-wise, but also bringing in her personal story into really optimizing that work-life balance. And we've been talking about that today. You guys, seriously, like this is a, this is a episode that you get to share out with your people because every single one of us need to hear what Francine was talking about today. Every single one of us needs a copy of this Art of Action book that she's written. The link's in the feed. We'll put it up on the screen one more time for you. It's in Tess, which is our, our uh, show bot. If you're part of that, if you want to be part of that, just type live in the comments here. But it is imperative for us to clear that bandwidth because so many of us, it's just never going to happen to us. So many of us, right? Like, so yeah. many of us, Fran, like so many of us just, it's just never going to happen to us. Yeah, it's, just, it's not going to happen automatically, right? And you can dream about it all you want, but that's why it's called the art of action because you get there through action mm -hmm. and the action is by choice. Yes. And it's in this book is about what is it? What are the actions that you have to take to get you to a place where you can manage your skittles? Yes. I love that so much. You guys, seriously, um, follow this lady, um, get in her world, be part of her. She's, she will change how you think and how you show up and she will allow you to unclutter your brain, brain bandwidth, um, which I admit I need some of that myself. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay. And it's okay to do the things that we want to do. We just get to figure out how to balance them. Right. And um, I so appreciate you being here with us today, Francine. Thank you, everybody. We've been we've had a slew of people watching us on our watch party. If you're watching us from a if you're watching us from a different platform other than the Aaron Strayer show, thank you so much for for being with us today, because we are kind of out there in the world on lots of different areas. So thank you so much for being with thank us. Thank you today. so much. Thank you. We'll, we'll see you right back here soon, everybody. Take care. Bye.